Hey guys, how y'all doing today? My name is Franchise Fanatic, and welcome back to the channel. If you guys, there's another movie review. I haven't mentioned the movies in, uh, since I think Valentine's Day last year. I think the movie I saw was Sonic the Hedgehog. Great film. But, uh, we're actually, I actually, uh, watched a movie at home, and today we're gonna be kind of re-reviewing, as well as kind of re-discussing Power Rangers from 2017. Uh, 2017 was a big year for film. We had, of course, the Lego Batman movie. We had the Lego Ninjago movie. We had, uh, Power Rangers. And, of course, we had Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and The, uh, the Last Jedi. So, uh, and I think Cars 3 as well. So, there's a, there's a lot of movies. <laughs> there's a lot of movies coming out in 2017. Um, and this, I think, you know, I don't trust critics. You know, I trust myself. Um, but I think this got like a 50%, kind of like Aladdin. Another movie I just watched a few days ago. And uh, before I get into the actual review of Power Rangers, I just kind of want to tell you guys uh, how I kind of my relationship to this franchise and uh when i was a kid i didn't really get into it you know at all um i didn't get into lego bionicle you know i that was more ninjago i didn't get into TN uh, tmnt teenage mutant ninja turtles didn't get into that at all and power rangers i didn't get into that either um i was born in 98 so i don't really know how i missed it because apparently it was the biggest effort thing of that time but whatever um so again let me just say, asterisk, I have not seen really anything of the TV show incarnations of the Power Rangers, all right? I have not. Uh, I've seen maybe one or two clips, and it looked cheesy as all get out. I'm sure if you love the franchise, if you were a kid or a teen or adult, whatever, um, I'm, I'm sure that it's good. Uh, but to me, when I see the Power Rangers, the, the TV show, and, you know, the different TV movies they have, um, basically anything that isn't this, it looks kind of cheaply made, very kiddy. Uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, it's CGI is horrible. And when they don't have CGI, they're in like these rubber costumes. It looks like Godzilla from the 40s. It just look, it doesn't look good. Power Rangers, the, the show. And again, if you like it, that's fine. That's your opinion. But I haven't really seen too much of it to kind of garnish an opinion, kind of create my own viewpoint on it. So I'm just going to kind of come out and say that I haven't really seen it. So again, uh, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the movie, and I'm not really comparing this film to anything else. So, that being said, this movie, uh, it surprised me and it shocked me when I saw it in theaters in 2017. Um, and coming from a guy that doesn't really like Power Rangers too much, it's a great freaking movie. I mean, it's not the best thing ever made, but it's good. And that's probably the best uh, compliment I can give this movie. Dean Israelite, I think. Dean... Is, I think that's how you say it, Dean Israelite. Um, he's a great director, and I really don't know him anything other than this, but he did a good job directing. There's a lot of wide shots. There's a scene where, uh, what's his face, the the main ranger. I just finished watching the movie. The main ranger, uh, the red guy, he's kind of driving a, a truck, and it's going kind of like in and out, and they're doing different shots and stitching. There's a lot of great shots in there. You know, the bike things look really nice. Um, you can tell that Dean really cares about the source material. You know, he's not... Uh, and it's crazy, you know, it really is, because the original Power Rangers, if you watch the Power Rangers from that, you know, 90s, even now, if they're still doing it, uh, it does look cheesy, and I think that's ultimately the point. Um, a lot of people go, oh, Power Rangers looks really dumb and kiddy because it's for children. Maybe that's why, I don't know. Um, I haven't really seen it to tell you if it's only for kids or not. It looks like it's only for kids, but again, I didn't watch it. Um, this movie, however, is PG-13. It is not for kids. It's very, there's swearing, there's violence, there's, you know, sex things. It's, it's not for little children like the show appears to be. And that's what's so crazy about it, is the fact that, you know, it's like taking, uh, I don't know, the Lego movie and remaking it into an R-rated film, you know? It just, it doesn't make sense, and yet it does make sense, you know? Because you watch the original, and it's very slapstick, you know, there's a lot of slow motion explosions, and they're just kind of punching things, and it looks really, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, it just, it doesn't look very good, but this does, you know? And it's not just because the CGI works, because the CGI, actually, for, for a movie, it's, just, it's blowing my mind, you know what I mean? It really is, because the CGI is great, the directing is great, the acting is great, the writing is great, everything is pretty much good in this movie. You know, I really can't think of that many negatives. I think maybe there's a few shots of the uh, the Alpha, the little droid um, robot played by Bill Hader, who I think they were trying to get to be the next BB-8, uh, the next C-3PO, something like that. And that's the, the, the saddest thing about this film, is that you can tell they cared. The writers, the director, the actors, everyone cared about this movie. And they wanted it to be the next biggest thing. And it didn't work, you know, it, it, it barely made any money, It critics hated it, you know, it just, it, I don't understand, you know, this, it, it, they really tried to make it 
uh, this this next iteration of Marvel or Star Wars or DC. You know, I mean, this wanted. And you can tell when you watch it, you know, it's good. And it lends itself to other sequels, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you were so close, you know what I mean? You you had me. Not, Power Rangers never had me, and this freaking had me, you know what I mean? Watching it in theaters, watching it now on my TV at home. It's good. I mean, the the actors are all good. The, 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 the motivations and the character arcs are not massively, you know, it's not The Last Jedi. It's not Joker. It's not any other of my top ten. This is not in my top ten favorite movies. But it's still a good movie, you know, just because it's not in my top 10 don't mean it's bad. But, um, I mean, like I said, man, they really and truly cared. And the fact that this kind of bombed, uh, and no one's talking about it, you know what I mean? No one talked about it. And maybe it's because it, everyone hated it. I don't know. I actually really freaking liked it. I thought it was a great movie. Um, Elizabeth Banks, of course, playing Rita, uh, I want to say Rita Skeeter, but it's not. It's Rita Repulsa. Um, she walked the line between being sexy and completely disgusting at the same time. I don't know how she does that. Well, she did it. Um, and basically, she's like Gollum, but instead of wanting a gold in the ring, she just wants plain old gold. And she makes Goldar, this big-ass creature made out of gold that, you know, destroys the city. And again, the effects look great, you know, because when you watch the old Power Rangers, the effects, th there are really no effects, you know. It's just guys in costumes beating the crap out of each other in slow motion. This looks good. It looks like a real monster is attacking the city, you know. They have, like, these really neat details where the, the pink uh, Power Ranger, who was Jasmine in Aladdin, she kind of, you know, she's in her pink jet, and she's going, and she's zooming, and then all of a sudden, like, you see, like, the... It's like a wide shot of the city, you know, and people are running, like, you know, Avengers 2012 style. And you see the freaking, like, windows shatter and glass falls. I mean, there's a lot of great shots and a lot of great CGI work done here. And I think people that overlook this movie really need to give it another shot or just actually watch it, you know. Like, coming from me, I didn't like Power Rangers, and I love this movie, you know. It's not perfect. Um, I am kind of struggling to think of any negatives. I do think that Billy, um, the Blue Ranger, he is not annoying... Because, you know, there's a certain, there's a reason why he does that. He does say he's on the spectrum, so maybe that's why. Again, I don't, I can't relate to that, but he is kind of an innocent soul, you know. He looks up to the Red Ranger as, and I can't remember his god dang name. I just saw the movie. Um, Jason, I think. Jason, maybe? I don't know. Something, like, something with a J. Uh, I think it was Jason. And uh, he looks up to him as kind of like a father figure because his father died. So he kind of, you know, he's kind of the, the kid that gets bullied and picked on for being weird, you know, quote unquote weird. Uh, and that's just, you know, school bullies being jackasses. But you basically have this effect where he looks up to this leader, you know, the Red Ranger is the leader. And I don't know why the color red, you know, you look at Ninjago. I mean, technically in Ninjago, the leader is Cole, and then it was Lloyd. It wasn't really Kai. But people thought it was guys, so they said, you know, go with it. Uh, but the red guy is the guy in charge, and he kind of looks up to him as not only, not necessarily a father figure, because, you know, if anything, he's like a year older than him, uh, than Billy, but still, I do think that it's it's a neat little thing. You know, there's, I almost, I didn't cry, but I teared up a few times, not going to lie, because there's, there's scenes where Billy literally effing dies, you know, and then he comes back, and, you know, he, he hugs his buddy, like, you know, like he's a father figure to him. You know, he really looks up to him. You know, he just wanted to be a superhero and, you know, shit at the fan and he died. Uh, but, you know, all these things happen where, you know, the, the the two girls have a reason. They have character arcs with the cheerleading. And, you know, I can't relate to that either. I'm a dude. But, you know, I understand what the director was doing. And there's a lot of critiques on this going, oh, well, you know, it's a Power Rangers movie. But they're, you only see them in their costumes for, like, 20 minutes. And I will say that is kind of wrong. Um... It's more than 20 minutes. It's more like 40 minutes. I mean, it's a big battle scene. You know, it's not like Avengers. You know, it's it's nothing like that. It's like B-grade style that we've expected. But it's not bad. You know what I mean? It really isn't. It, it, it looks good, and it, it works. You know, it really works. Um, and I do think that there's uh, that other criticism of, oh, they're, they're barely in the suits. Um, I do think that Dean Israel like, did a good job of actually making this team of Power Rangers feel like a team, you know, they start out kind of like, who the fudge are you, you know, what the heck is this, where am I, why is the wall talking, you know what I mean, why is there a red robot, uh, and it is weird, you know, some of the dialogue and some of the the way the kids act, because they are teenagers, um, and I can't confirm that when I was a teenager, and I kind of still act that way, but when, uh, you know, when I was in high school, uh, people would act that way, you know, they'd just be bullies for no reason, they'd be morons, they'd be joking all the time, you know, that's how it works, 
Um, so I think having like a really older person, like a boomer, watch this and be like, that's really bad, you know. But that's how they act, you know what I mean? I mean, without being R-rated and saying F that, F the F, F every few seconds, as many high schoolers do. Um, it's pretty much identical to what a you know, high schooler would, would, would sound like. Um, but there's a lot of these slower moments, you know, that Dean really cares about, again, like I said, building up this team of Power Rangers. It's not like, oh, okay, you know, Zordon in the wall says, you're the Power Rangers. And, you know, maybe in the show they'd be like, okay, you know, and then they'd suit up and they'd be beating the tar out of them. But in this, because it's like two hours and so minutes long, you can't have that and be like, oh, sweet, I'm a Power Ranger? Okay. You know, and then, and then they fight Rita and it's over. You need to build up to that moment. So that big shot of them walking in slow motion in their armor, it's not just cool. It's not just a neat looking shot. It means something to the actual story and the actual character arcs that they're going through. You know, to kind of like Ninjago season one, if the ninja wants to, you know, unlock their true potential, they need to break the barrier that's inside them mentally and emotionally, not just peak physical condition. And it's the same thing here. You know, it sounds cheesy, but it's what they went for, and I think it's a pretty good job. Uh, there's a lot of talking. There's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of, again, these character arcs, and you need to set them up. Because if you want to pay off to be worth the wait, you need to have that be set up in the correct way. And they did a good job of doing that. I think that, you know, like I said, there's a lot of talking, all right? There's not a whole lot of action toward the second to third act of this film. But... You do understand why each character is in that position and why they chose to do that. So that's what's really nice. It's not a character study. It's not Joker, all right? It's not as deep as something like The Last Jedi or any other movie like that. But for being what it was, comparing... You know, I mean, if I were to compare this movie to other Power Rangers material, this is the best made. I think I, I want to say that objectively, but again, I haven't seen them all. CGI, acting, writing, dialogue editing, everything's just top-notch in this. Comparing this movie to another movie, like a Star Wars film, or a Marvel film, or any other of my top ten favorite films, it's not quite as good, but that doesn't mean it's bad, you know? And again, I'm kind of struggling to think of reasons why I don't like it, but I really do enjoy this movie, you know? And again, that's coming from a guy that doesn't like Power Rangers that much. I, you know, I, th I always thought it was kind of cheesy and corny and kind of kiddy. Um, but again, this is not a kid's film. They're swearing, they're violent, you know, it's, it's not... They're not joking around. And I think that the, the director, Dean, really kind of... He kind of walks a thin line between cheesiness and mature intensity, you know? There's a lot of mature, intense things in this movie, right? The, the, the motivations of the characters, the bad guy, uh, the, the threat that the whole freaking Earth is going to explode, you know? I mean, it's not... It's not like, you know, the other show where they're like, oh, I'm going to destroy you, and then we got to fight, you know. There's real motivations going on here. And I think Rita, Elizabeth Banks, like I said, besides looking weird and hot at the same time, her motivation is just revenge against Zordon. I got to do it. I got to do it. You know, that's how it goes. I got to do it. But I do think that, um, if you want to meme that, meme that. Me saying I got to do it. But I do think that, like I said, going forward with this character, I do understand why they did that. You know, there are certain scenes with Rita in it, and it's kind of cheesy, you know? She's kind of zipping all over the place, and, you know, that's to, of course, show the, you know, <coughs> you know, like, kind of, like, horror vibe that they do sometimes in movies where they kind of do that, but uh, Venom did it. But I do think they were on the right track. You know, they really were. They weren't, like, you know, it's not like Dean didn't understand the source material, and I don't understand the source material that much. Again, I only saw this movie, but I do know what's going on with this franchise. You know, I understand what it's about and what they're doing. So, I think it's a, it's a good thing to have this sort of, um, you know, blend between intensity and, like I said, kind of, not comedic timing, uh, comedy relief, but it is, you know, her performance is kind of cheesy and corny and B-roll-y-ish, you know, kind of B-movie style. Um, and that's not bad. It just kind of doesn't necessarily go with the rest of the movie tone. That would be probably my only negative, is that, you know, Rita... You know, the Power Rangers are talking about, you know, my mom's dying, or my dad died, or I'm a screw-up, and, you know, the nudes on a cell phone page of these women, and then all of a sudden you head to, like, freaking Rita, and she's like, go, 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 you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's just kind of a departure, um, but I know what they were doing, you know what I'm saying, it's not like the director was like, oh, she'll be crazy, because it's, because she is, you know, again, it's, it's a great way to draw upon the original source material, um, like, Jason saying it's morphin' time, you know, I mean, for God's sake, it's on the freaking DVD cover right there, it's morphin' time. Um, but, you know, when I saw that, I'm not a big fan, I'm really not even a fan of Power Rangers. I'm a fan of this movie, but not the actual material, because um, I haven't watched it, but I know it's morphin' time, you know, I, I know that. So it was kind of cool to see, you know, I, I imagine like a hardcore, diehard fan, um, 
you know, would, would absolutely lose their mind. And I was just like, oh, I see it, you know, I understand that. Uh, there's one little thing, too, where they play the, um, there's a lot of music in this movie, a lot of, uh, sometimes the music does kind of ruin it. I think, you know, I'm not a huge fan of some of the songs. I know they were popular during the time. I think when Billy dies and they play that song, I don't think they should have played a song. I think they just should have played instrumental. I don't think they should have had, like, an actual, like, radio song, you know. And I think the song was country. Again, I don't like country, uh, but I think the song was country because Billy did mention that he liked country music. So there's a lot of really neat callbacks to this movie. You know, there's certain lines and certain actions that the characters do in the beginning that they do in the end, and it really kind of book folds and bookends this uh, film. But that would really be it. I think that Rita is a little bit distracting from the overall maturity of the tone of the film, and then, of course, the music can be a little bit blaring. There is one scene where they're in the end, and they, they do play the Go, Go, Power Rangers, you know, that song... Um, it's cheesy, it's supposed to be, it's, if anything, it's a callback to the original, that's what it was, you know. Like in The Force Awakens, uh, Finn's, you know, diving through the, the Millennium Falcon's container and he picks up a training thing, you know, one of those training droids that Luke used in A New Hope and he kind of goes, puts it down, you know. Jurassic World did it where one of the kids gets the freaking night goggles in Jurassic Park 1, you know, it's, if anything, that song playing was just kind of a callback to the, you know, it's an Easter egg, basically. Because um, it, it didn't last long, you know, it was just a little song. You know what I'm talking about if you saw the film. Uh, but really, that would be it. I mean, this movie, it deserves more recognition. And if anything, it deserves a sequel. If anything, it deserves a sequel. Because they set it up, and it, you know, some movies do set up sequels, and they're really shit, and you're like, oh, I don't want that. You know, that's not good. But this movie was good. You know, it deserved to have, maybe not like a whole franchise, but maybe at least a trilogy. You know, because the, actor, <coughs> the actors were good, Almost died. Uh, the actors were good, and the writing was good, and the script was pretty good. You know, they really nailed that uh, tone of high school immaturity with the maturity of becoming an adult, you know. And, and then at the end, they just have, you know, they're in the suits, and they look badass, and they're, you know, punching rock guys, you know. So there is a, a little bit of a silliness to it, but that's, again, because the original franchise, the original source material is kind of silly in nature. So, I mean, Dean, he did a great freaking job. The director did a great job of kind of marrying these two elements together um and it made a good movie you know i really do think this is a good movie if you have if you haven't seen it um i do suggest watching it if you're a big fan of power rangers i don't know why you haven't seen it if you think power rangers is kind of weird like me um i don't hate it you know i'm open to watching it i just haven't seen it um watch it anyway you know it, it's a good movie it's not little kitty it's if anything it's you know for 13 14 up not six seven and up you know it's, it's very much a big departure from the original source material but i enjoyed it you know i really did um, I think that they should have made a sequel of again. I don't think they will. I think apparently they're going to reboot it. Um, I don't know why the F you would reboot it because this was the reboot and it was actually good. But, you know, what am I? You know, I don't know anything. But anyway, I um, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Again, tell me in the comments if you have seen Power Rangers. Again, I really enjoyed it. Um, if anything, like I said, Rita's a bit weird and then uh, the music kind of takes departure away from it. But other than that, those are pretty small. I'm gonna, uh, I don't know what I give Power Rangers whenever I reviewed it last in 2017. I don't even know if I had a channel back then. I don't even think I did. Um, I would probably give this an A-. minus. I do think that maybe B+, plus A-, minus, something around those lines. It's a good movie. It's not great. It's not, you know, the best movie I've ever seen. But it's nowhere near mediocre, and it's nowhere near horrible. It's, it's good. It's a solid, good movie if you like action. And, uh, you know, it's good. So, anyway, tell me in the comments what you think. Uh, I really enjoyed re-watching this. I think this was the first time I saw it since I got it on Blu-ray back in 2017. So what does that tell you? Uh, but it is a good movie. I enjoyed re-watching it. If you have seen it, tell me in the comments. And uh, would you like a sequel or do you want them to kind of reboot it and try different things? Thank you guys and we'll see you in the next video.